So I taught the large pre-med class, and um, I, uh, you know, I went by, and I, I did that for a couple of years, one or two, and by the end of the second year, I was convinced that it was actually a very good lecture, because by the standard assessment, I was succeeding. What, what is the standard assessment? Well, I can think of two things that come back to mind to reinforce that feeling of being a good lecturer. One was the end of semester questionnaire. Most faculty, when they teach the pre-med course at Harvard, come close to committing suicide at the end of the term when they get the results of their questionnaire. But not so for me. I got, you know, 4.2, 4.5 on a five-point scale. So clearly, the students were enjoying or liking what I was doing. The second thing is, that I could give these pre-meds who were not going to be physicists quite complicated problems. Now, there were some signs that deep down something was amiss. You know, in spite of giving me high rating, each time that I taught, a couple of students would write down in, in that free response section at the end of the questionnaire, physics is boring or physics sucks. I didn't know what to make of those remarks, so I just systematically uh, ignored them. <laughs> About seven years after starting to teach at Harvard, I came across a series of articles in the American Journal of Physics that described a conceptual survey of Newton's laws called the Force Concept Inventory. Now, the Force Concept Inventory has about 30 questions which are multiple choice questions that deal with the understanding, the conceptual understanding of Newton's laws. Let me give you what turns out to be one of the hardest questions on this test. A heavy truck and a light car collide head on. The force of the heavy truck on the light car is A, larger than that of the light car on the heavy truck. B, they're equal to one another. C, the light car exerts a larger force on the heavy truck than the other way around. D, they're not exerting any force on each other. They're just in each other's way. <laughs> you ask students in an interactive physics class, what's Newton's third law? Action is reaction. The force of A on B is equal to the force on B on A in any interaction. They can recite that law. You ask this question, and 60% is convinced that the heavy truck exerts a larger force on the small car than the other way around. So what Hessenus did was very interesting. He used this as a pretest at the beginning on the first day of class and then again as a post-test at the end of the semester to see what the gain was and how many more students got that question and 29 similar questions correct. Somebody actually sent me those articles and I read them, uh, said that there was very, very little gain in introductory physics courses taught actually in a number of large schools in Arizona, New Mexico, and California. He, in the second article, because he had so many data points, he had about 5,000 data points, he was able to analyze the effect of the teaching approach on the pre to post test. So he, for each of these four groups, he took the gain, compared them, and you know what? No difference. It doesn't make any difference what we do in front of these students. It doesn't make a difference whether we win teaching awards or whether we score at the bottom of the scale on the teaching evaluations. Well, you can imagine my reaction. I, I probably very similar to you. Now, I shook my head in disbelief and I said, not my students, <laughs> not Harvard students. But you know, I've been trained as a scientist, so you learn not to make just assertions, but to get data and disprove or confirm a theory. So I felt challenged and I thought, I'm gonna show that my class things are really, really different. So I set out to test my students. Now we're spelled. Hardly at the first group of students taking their seats in the computer classroom where we administered this test, this was back in 1991, or one student raised her hand and she said to me, Professor Mazur, how should I answer these questions? according to what you taught me, or according to the way I usually think about these things. <laughs> well, by the time the test had been completed, I had been dragged out of my ivory tower, and life has not been the same things. Well, with that long introduction, let me, uh, let me get started here. The message that I want to get across, and it may sound completely trivial at this point, is that 
we should really shift the focus from teaching to helping students learn.